So I received a uh, message uh, from someone asking me to uh, explain a little bit about where I get my seeds and um, kind of the process involved with that along with um, you know what kind of, um, of uh, different mediums I've used for my seedlings and my plantings initially and give a little bit greater detail on that. So I'll go ahead and do that today. So what I do is in early uh, winter time um, after all the growing has been done everybody's done their cleanup um, I'll go ahead and purchase my seeds for the following spring now the reason I do that is because it's in the winter time that most seed companies and individuals who are gathering seeds are going to take the seeds from the previous season and they're going to go ahead and start selling them now I try not to buy seeds from uh, individuals who just happen to sell a few seeds off on the side. Just because of past experience, I've noticed that those individuals, uh, they don't do the proper steps in order to get uh, highly germinating seeds uh, that are gonna be successful basically. And the reason for that is they either haven't let their vegetables develop and mature long enough for the seeds to develop and become usable or there are people who, for example, they took a green pepper from the grocery store and then, you know, dried off the seeds and sold them on, let's say, on eBay. And uh, as uh, some of you already know, uh, for seeds to be successful, they have to be mature seeds, meaning that uh, the fruit or the vegetable has to be very well developed in order for it to be actually a good mature seed. If you took a green pepper or a cucumber or tomato from the grocery store, and took those seeds and planted it. Yes, it might grow, it may not grow, uh, but it won't develop and grow as successfully as a mature seed. The reason for that is because uh, at the grocery store, um, the produce that you receive from most grocery stores, uh, they've uh, been picked so early the seeds haven't matured. And so what I do is um, I have a few buyers or a few uh, companies that are selling on eBay and you can tell who those are because they have thousands of orders. You know, say 1,000 sold or 2,000 sold. And so what I do is I get on eBay and I just kind of look at what I want to grow. And so what I did was um, last winter, I made a list of all the things that I wanted to grow. I kind of picked a date on things and then made my list. And as you can see from this list, um, I start with the early vegetables first, the, the uh, frost or cold tolerant vegetables first. So I planted my cabbage, cauliflower, and broccoli first. And of course I started the seeds indoors, but I had them growing pretty well about to anywhere from three to 10 inches before I put them outside. Now some people will go ahead and put them outside within about three inches. I tend to wait till they're about six to 12 inches before I send anything out outside. And then the next thing that I grew were the sugar peas, snow peas, and snap peas. Um, they are cold tolerant too. And so I got them started next. And then after that, I started uh, my lettuce so that way I can have some vegetables already growing. Now, what I'm targeting for is uh, for these other vegetables. Uh, if you notice that down here, I have my main set, which is my peppers, tomatoes, bell peppers. Uh, they tend to need warmer weather. So I usually don't plant the seeds until about late March, early April. Uh, for tomatoes and bell peppers, they need daytime temperatures of, of about 65 to 75 minimum. And then nighttime temperatures about between 50 and 55. Now in the past, I've put my tomato plants and pepper plants outside at 50 degree uh, nighttime temperatures. And they kind of struggled a little bit and it did that it did definitely hinder or make some uh, make some problems in terms of flowering, pollinating, and also retaining the tiny little fruit bulbs without it falling off or just shriveling up. And so over the last couple seasons, I usually tend to wait until the nighttime temperatures are 55 degrees. I know some people wait till they're 45 to 50. Um, I tend to wait till 55 just because uh, it's much more beneficial. Now, um, after I take care of the tomatoes and the pepper, bell pepper seed, um, uh, seedlings and planting those seeds, um, I'll do my last set, which are going to be zucchini, eggplant, and cucumbers and beans because they tend to like um, a lot warmer weather. So for a zucchini, eggplant, and cucumbers and beans to really take off, they really like the hot weather. So I won't even plant the first set 
of um, seedlings uh, um, and plant those seeds until about May 1st and then I'll grow succession growing and I'll grow some more on June 1st. And then in order for me to have pumpkins for the uh, October month, um, I'll plant those uh, May 21st to about uh, June 21st. And just in order to hit those targets right, I'll probably go ahead and plant, uh, you know, on those dates. So that way I kind of space it out in case I hit or, or it, it's whether it's early or a little bit later than I want. And so by picking May 21st and June 21st, I'll kind of get that sweet spot and, and uh, I'll have some sort of uh, pumpkins uh, for right in the October month. So let me get into uh, the seeds themselves. And so, like I said before, I grew my cabbage first, cabbage, broccoli, and cauliflower. And so with those items, um, I grew them in uh, a lot of soil mediums um, like perlite, which is kind of the rocky, airy um, I, um, soil mediums. And so with perlite, um, it's very light, airy. Uh, it's in a lot of potting soil because um, the ability for drainage. Now uh, with cabbage, broccoli, and cauliflower, I tend to uh, grow most of those items in perlite or a combination of perlite and rock wool. Uh, the reason for that is um, I can leave my cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli uh, in perlite or rock wool until it's about uh, six to 10 inches and it'll be just fine. I don't even have to add any fertilizer or fertilizer solution in order for it to be still growing and looking healthy. Um, just the natural uh, first leaves that come out um, are gonna be just fine. And then um, just through watering process, it'll be just still doing well on its own. Now, although I did grow these tomatoes in a combination of perlite and a little bit of rock wool here, uh, I used the rock wool cubes to put the seed in. And people say, well, how come with the tomatoes you tend to do a combination of rock wool to perlite and also using uh, peat pellets? And the reason for that is, is um, with tomatoes, they have a tendency to fall down, okay? The stems get too weak. And by putting it in rock wool, I noticed that there's more root formation to keep it upright. But really my favorite, although I kind of am lazy because as you know, I tend to take my tomato seedlings, let them grow um, minimum six inches before I take them outside. And sometimes I'll leave them, let them grow about 10 to 12 inches. Um, the reason I like using those Jiffy peat pellets and growing them in that medium is because um, I noticed with tomatoes and bell peppers, because I'm keeping them indoors for so long and because so many true leaves are forming with my tomatoes before they go outside, um, it usually needs additional nutrients before I put it in its final resting home, which is basically these coolers, right? So I take my I take my coolers and drill some holes and I put it in its final resting place. The problem with this situation is is my tomatoes are usually going to be about six to twelve inches before I take them outside. And they can't survive and form all those layers of of true leaves when they're growing their second and third and fourth true set of leaves. Um, they need Tomatoes and peppers do need additional nutrients. In order for it to get its nutrients, um, by the time the third true sets or the second and third true leaves are formed, um, they're gonna need additional nutrients, right? And so like on this particular tomato plant, you'll notice that the first baby leaves came out here and then we got our true leaves here. Once it gets its second and third and fourth true set of leaves, it's gonna be needing additional nutrients. So what I'm gonna do is with this basket case I use, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add fertilizer solution or hydroponic solution and fertilizer water um, into this bucket. And so that way it wicks up all that uh, fertilizer water. Now, initially the very first time I put some solution in here, 
I'm going to go ahead and probably use one third hydroponic solution to two thirds water because I wanted to have it diluted because I don't want to shock the plant with too much fertilizer at the beginning and I'll kind of build it up just like you harden your plants before you take them outside fully. Uh, same thing with the solution. I like to kind of go a little bit weaker and then build its way up but in order for it to continue to develop its second, third, fourth and beyond true leaves um, it needs additional um, you know ability to grow itself because uh, the water water alone and the first set of leaves that go on here are not enough nutrients to keep this going on its own. Now going back to the Jiffy peat pellets, the reason I like these, although I'm lazy in terms of the cleanup of it, is that this is a combination of peat moss and soil and it has nutrients in it. So these seedlings that I put in here that are growing, these tomatoes, they're going to go ahead and as they grow their second, third, fourth true set of leaves, the nutrients from that soil are going to be enough to keep it growing. And I have it in a south facing area and uh, uh, initially because of the spacing I have the grow lights here but uh, you know I have a really nice uh, south facing window that gets a ton of light. And with that along with the soil medium it's enough nutrients to get, get it growing and it can be you know six to ten inches before I take them outside and it'll be just fine. The only problem is with any type of soil medium um, in order for me to put it as final resting place which is the styrofoam coolers that I do the um, you know the hydroponic solution in um, I'm going to have to rinse this soil off you know and separate it from the root system uh, before I plant them into the coolers and that's where it gets kind of messy and I kind of hate having to sit there and do each individual plant and that's why I typically have kind of somewhat avoided doing this with all my plants with tomatoes and peppers because the additional growth needed um, the fact that I don't have to mess around with uh, solution water at the beginning I go ahead and do that with the tomatoes and peppers but when it comes to uh, certain other vegetables I can get away with using this uh, perlite or using a straight uh, rock wool solution um, if you look at my list previously you'll notice that I have um, my sugar peas, snow peas, snap peas they grew in the soil medium where I just put them in straight um, perlite and with that with sugar peas, snow peas, snap peas, uh, they tend to uh, do quite well. They'll grow a whole foot in the rock wool or, um, or perlite uh, without needing any additional nutrients that whole time. So before I get them eventually back outside and growing in its final resting place, um, I don't have to bother with adding water solution to it because um, it just uh, doesn't need it. And so with stuff like sugar peas, no peas, snap peas, um, I can go ahead and use the whole perlite rock wool growing method without having to worry about adding solution to it and giving it that fertilizer sort of boost it needs. Now, as I said before, when I do my tomatoes, uh, they tend to, uh, as it's forming its second, third, fourth true leaves, it looks kind of in a situation where it looks like it's unhealthy because it needs additional nutrients. And for that reason, that's why I tend to lean toward, um, you know, doing at least half of my growing in the Jiffy peat pellets because I know that it needs the additional nutrients um, to be successful. And so I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and basically um, uh, grow about 50% to 75% depending on a given season of my tomatoes and peppers in Jiffy peat pellets and then I'll sit through there as it's grown 6 to 10 inches or 6 to 12 inches uh, right before I'm putting it into the final resting place outside I'll go ahead and I'll take um, you know I'll take a little hose or a little bucket and dunk um, the Jiffy, Jiffy peat pellets and get it uh, removed from the soil, removed from the roots before I put them into the coolers. And that is kind of a bit of a hassle. That's why I kind of prefer to do at least half or seven, you know, half or more of my tomatoes and peppers um, 
seedlings in the rock wool or uh, per, uh, rock wool perlite combination. And as you can see, I went ahead and um, I have it in the solution. Now this particular one, because it hasn't, it hasn't formed its second and third true set of leaves as much yet, uh, this is just straight water. But within the next uh, couple weeks, uh, 10, to 12, 10 to 2 weeks, 10 days to 2 weeks, I'm going to go ahead and I'll switch over to about a one-third uh, hydroponic solution to two-thirds water and increase that uh, as we go along um, with this water when I do the watering. Uh, just because uh, it'll need additional uh, fuel basically to grow the seedlings. And so that is a little bit about my seedlings. And I went ahead and uh, grew a number of vegetables. And I happened to be at Home Depot a few weeks back. And so I went ahead and bought this uh, seed packet. I wanted to try this cherry super sweet hybrid seedlings. And as you can see, I took a basically a um, little hamburger container to go container. As you know, we've a lot of us have uh, got these containers uh, being stuck at home. And I went ahead and uh, I basically keep these extra containers on. I love this one because um, uh, it has little grooves on the very bottom. So as you water, some of the water can sit down a little bit further while the, um, while the um, Jiffy Peat Palettes are sitting up on top. And so it's a perfect, um, perfect setup and it's like the perfect container. And um, I went ahead and uh, as you water that, um, the water will sit at the very bottom into those grooves and the um, it, and these uh, kind of set up a moisture do moisture dome and so I love this whole container itself and so I try not to go out and buy my containers just because um, I grow so much stuff but um, you know I have some stuff left over and I kind of rotate and just buy some new stuff every so often but you don't have to go out there and spend a lot of money you can go ahead and just use some of the stuff you already have and so this is kind of a little my moisture dome here. And um, why is that a little bit of stem here? <laughs> Interesting. And so anyways, um, I went ahead and I think these are tomatoes. Let me look at the tab. Yeah, these are Roma tomatoes. So I put them in the Jif Jiffy Pea pellets and uh, I won't have to use uh, any sort of water fertilizer or fertilizer um, when it's forming its third and fourth set of true leaves just because it'll have enough nutrients within the rock, uh, within the uh, peat pellet moss uh, soil medium um, within that soil base and so it'll be just fine on that. And then um, with the, um, some of these other sweet banana peppers, I think I went ahead and I put them straight into the rock wool. And I take a deep enough container. And when I set this up, um, I space them out and I put my seeds in here. And with these sweet banana peppers, um, and sweet banana peppers, uh, what I basically am doing is I space them out and within about 10 to 14 days, they'll start sprouting. Now, because this soil medium is so relaxed, um, and so airy and so light, I'll have about half an inch to an inch of water sitting at the very bottom. It'll kind of evaporate and move and, and also with it touching the other millions of rock wool in there, it'll go ahead and, and bring the water up. And so when you touch this, you can feel that it's damp. Now, what'll happen is once this starts sprouting, um, the roots are going to go ahead and start spreading. And I like that because it doesn't really hinder it like uh, it does with Jiffy Pea pellets. But then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and as it uh, grows, uh, when it's about uh, 6 to 10 inches, I'll go ahead and um, I'll go ahead and replant them outside. But uh, this method uh, here will allow me to... Um, uh, basically let the roots kind of go on its own and before they get too crowded uh, and get tangled up I'll take them and what I basically do is this is why it's so much easier in the Jiffy Pea Pellets um, I can go ahead and flood this whole bucket that's with the perlite and then I can just carefully with a giant size spoon I can go ahead and pull up each individual plant you know pull away 
and uh, it becomes very easy for me to replant um, uh, the seedling. Now with the Jiffy Pea pellets, because I'm doing this hydroponic method and I'm not planting it into the ground, I've got to take each peat pellet, I've got to rinse the dirt off, kind of make sure the roots are okay, and then I'll have to plant in the box. And from past experience of doing this a number of years, it's kind of a pain for me and I'm lazy, uh, versus being able to just take a giant spoon, flood this whole bucket, scoop out with a giant spoon, the seedling that's about six to ten inches tall and then put it right into my uh, hydroponic buckets and so that's a little bit about the seedlings uh, how I go about purchasing and most of my seeds I purchase on eBay uh, I buy them from um, seed actual seed sellers that sells anywhere from one to five it'll show that they sold 1,000 to 10,000 different seeds already to people uh, I tend to avoid the ones that are into selling individually or it doesn't look like uh, they sell too many seeds because um, uh, or I look at their comments and uh, they have very poor germination. And in the wintertime, I have a lot of time to kind of sit on the couch or in bed and just kind of look to see what kind of seeds are out there. I kind of choose my list of what I want to grow and then I buy those seeds according to it. And I grow my, you know, my favorites. I grow the tomatoes, the peppers, the cucumbers, the beans, the zucchinis, eggplant, cauliflower, broccoli, uh, a little bit of corn this year. And so it's usually about the same stuff. And so um, I just kind of go through eBay and find the seed sellers and purchase from them. And I'm growing so many things anyway. So if some of it doesn't sprout as well, it's not that big of a deal. And once I purchase them, I hold on to them until the springtime until it's ready to go. And that's how it goes.